Hello again and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this time we'll be discussing fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics essentially is the study of any forces acting on a body through either air or water. And air resistance is the force that opposes the direction of motion of a body through the air. So as you run forward, air resistance will meet you. And we've, we understand this from basic biomechanical principles that we did in year one. However, this time we need to discuss what happens to objects or bodies in water, and that is called drag. So that is the force that opposes the direction of motion of a body through water. So when we're talking about fluid mechanics, we're talking about air, we're talking about water. And not only does that affect people in terms of an athlete, but bear in mind it can also affect an object such as a shuttlecock, which is known as a projectile, something we hit. Um, and of course it would affect athletes if they were racing through the water. There are several factors that affect air resistance and drag, and these are the factors we're going to be discussing in this screencast. We have velocity, mass, front cross-sectional area, streamlining and shape, which technically could count as two separate factors, and surface characteristics. So let's go by each of these one by one, give some detail and try to provide you with some examples. Let's start with velocity. Velocity is the one factor which modern athletes do not wish to change. The greater the velocity, the greater the air resistance or drag. So the faster an athlete moves, the greater the air resistance is going to be imposed upon them or drag is going to be imposed on them. Think about 50 meter swimmers who are sprinters, the amount of water that comes up or the amount of drag that they create in that water is a natural reaction to how fast they're going. And the reason athletes don't bother to change the factor of velocity is because they want to go as fast as possible. And so this is a factor that's out of our control in terms of performance. We can't reduce it to minimize air resistance or drag. So we need to look at the other factors if we want to increase the speed of an object in water or in air. And so velocity is often a factor that is important, but often a factor that most athletes or top performers will not adjust. The second factor you can discuss is mass. Now, if a mass of a body becomes increased, so the size or weight of a body uh, becomes greater, what that does is it doesn't generally factor against air resistance, but it increases the momentum of a body. So once we get that object moving, because it's heavy, it's then going to accelerate fast. Think about um, a boulder rolling down a hill. We've got a heavy massed object. It takes a while to get it going, but as it gets going, that boulder is going to accelerate rapidly. And therefore, when it accelerates, is going to provide a lot of air resistance. And so therefore, if that body increases velocity, air resistance becomes much more problematic. The good example of this is something like a person on a bike. So on flat ground, if a person stood upright on flat ground, of course, air resistance would meet the person themselves because they're standing up and the bike itself weighs a certain amount. But as you start to go downhill with that mass, it will take a while to generate speed, but it will start to generate quite a lot of speed. And therefore, the rider might need to change shape in order to manipulate the air resistance in order to go faster. So mass, technically, when stationary, doesn't affect air resistance greatly. But once you get it going in terms of momentum, you will generate more air resistance. The third factor is front cross-sectional area. This is the area on the front of the athlete, hence the name. And the larger that area, the larger the air resistance or drag through the water. And what we know from year one work is that sports teams will try to reduce the amount of front cross-sectional area to in order to get faster speeds or to accelerate athletes because the 
the large front cross sectional area of an athlete will slow them down. And we can use things like wind tunnels, which we met in year one, to use a jet stream of coloured air to find a certain positions in order to reduce air resistance and to make an athlete faster. Think about sports such as skiing, slalom skiing, the athlete will bend into a position. They'll lower the front cross-sectional area, so they bend their body forwards and their torso low in order to meet less air resistance and therefore to accelerate faster. The same can be said in cycling, especially when you watch track cycling. The rider will be in such a low position that the front cross-sectional area is reduced, therefore they can go faster. In terms of cycling, if you raised your body upright while you were cycling and you were on a windy day, you would actually slow down. It'd be much harder to cycle. That's because the air resistance is meeting you and slowing you down. So it's that principle that athletes are trying to reduce. The same goes in the water. The more of the body you can bring out of the water, the more water will hit you. So you're trying to reduce that front cross-sectional area when you swim as well. Streamlining and shape technically are part of the same factor, but you can utilize them differently within exam questions. If we make an object, a body or a person more streamlined or what we call aerodynamic, the lower the air resistance or drag through water will be. So by streamlining, we mean creating a smooth airflow around an aerodynamic shape. So imagine, again going back to swimming, after the diver enters the water from a dive and they go into that really tall stretched out position, they try to streamline themselves so they can minimize the pressure of the water against themselves so they can move faster through that water. So streamlining that position. Again think about the cyclists we spoke about in the last factor. They lower their body position, they're streamlining, or a 100 meter sprinter, they're streamlining, they're going low at the start in order to minimize air resistance to accelerate. We often talk at this point of aerodynamic shapes, and the one we often talk about is an aerofoil shape, which is the picture you see on the screen. This is the common shape that will aim to reduce air resistance and increase speed through air, which you'll meet later in the year through the concept of the Bernoulli principle. But for this screencast, that is the shape we mean by an aerofoil shape. And it's commonly seen on a cyclist helmet, it's a classic aerofoil shape, and that shape will minimize the air resistance and drag for that cyclist, and therefore make them go faster and accelerate through a race. The final factor is surface characteristics and logically if we make a surface of an object that we want to push um, against air resistance smoother then we can reduce that air resistance. And so what sports scientists have done with, certainly within the last 15 to 20 years is that the materials used in clothing have now become engineered in order to reduce air resistance. They're trying to make one piece outfits that are very smooth and therefore lower the air resistance or drag through water. If you look at a swimmer such as Michael Phelps, his entire outfit, the cap, the, the goggles even, the, the one piece swimsuit is smooth or deliberately engineered so he can go faster through the water. Swimmers will also reduce their body hair by shaving to reduce that tiny amount of drag in the water to make them go faster. Once again, thanks for watching this screencast on the factors affecting uh, fluid friction. And if you need any more help with biomechanics, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.